this series a firm foundation? Can somebody say firm foundation? Firm foundation. What if I told you your, your Christian walk is built upon the foundation of a miracle? Because whatever, whatever you build your, your faith on is how you should be experiencing your faith. Our faith is built upon the supernatural revelation and experience that a man rose from the dead. Somebody say Jesus, Jesus rose, rose from, the dead. from the dead. If you'd put up, when the series is a firm foundation, the series firm foundation, then that means your, your, our lives should be solid. I said this in the first service, and literally the Holy Spirit gave it to me in real time. How many people walked on water that we know of in the Bible? Two, right? Who, who were they? And who else? Peter, right? Anybody know in the Word of God, every time you see water, what it's referencing, what it's symbolic of? So it says, and you husbands, this, this Ephesians chapter 5, you husbands, wash your wives with the water of the Word. So what the Bible does is have, and by the way, Everybody say four gospels. four gospels. Let's do a little theology real quick. Everybody say four gospels. Four gospels. Four gospels. So gospel means good news. How many of y'all know it's critical for the church to be declaring good news? Because how many of y'all know on these TV waves is not a whole lot of good news? Am I right? Come on. Right? So people should get good news, especially from the church. Y'all got it? But here's what it's not. It's not good news where you hear what you want to hear. Y'all got it? That's called a lie. That's not called good news. Good news is when God begin to tell you what he's done for you and begin to tell you what he'll do through you. And you don't do nothing for God. Well, you know I did that for God. No, God is doing it through you. It's called partnership. Your heavenly father is a spirit. So somebody say he's a spirit. He's a spirit. And he's a king. He's a, king. He's a what? He's a spirit. spirit. He's a king. Got it? Now, if he's a spirit, that means you can't see him. But if he's an invisible spirit and a king, that means he's ruler over the spirit realm. How many in here think you're in the spirit realm? Would you raise your hand? Yeah, I, got, I got some bent elbows. I got some, uh, am I? <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Anybody know what Jesus preached? Wouldn't it be good to know what Jesus preached? What did he preach? He preached what? He preached the kingdom. Anybody know the person that God sent to actually introduce Jesus? A guy named they called John the Baptist. Right? Y'all know what he preached? The kingdom. Y'all know all throughout the Old Testament, he says he's going to establish a kingdom made without hands. That means he's going to establish a rulership in the earth that man has nothing to do with. Because any kingdom that man rules apart from God is going to be destructive, selfish, demeaning, and not the best for everybody. So in this series, Firm Foundation, if you build your life on what God says about you, you're going to walk on water. Now you may say, no, I can't walk on water. Always remember the four Gospels. Come on, what's the first Gospel? All right. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We're doing a little theology. I want you to you know this. Not so you can be smart and go tell a person at the water cooler. Amen. I'm saying this because so you'll know those people whose name is Matthew, his occupation was a tax collector. You'll know the book of Luke, which is the second gospel, that he was a physician. In other words, you would know that your heavenly father works through ordinary people. 
And the four Gospels is almost still Old Testament, even though it's in the New, because Jesus had not ascended yet. So there's certain things that he did in the Gospels that now that we're born again, like he said in the Gospels, here's what he told him when his disciples asked him, hey, teach us to pray, Jesus, like John taught his disciples. So every, just about every sporting team, they say the Lord's Prayer. Am I right? Come on, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. That's our Old Testament prayer. It's in the new. Now, let me, I just want you, I'm not trying to in, intellect, it's not about intellect, it's about you understanding. He told that to his disciples before he ever went to the cross, before he was ever raised from the dead. He was praying that thy kingdom come. The kingdom is already here. So you don't have to pray that it comes. The kingdom is already where? Here. Here. If I keep praying that, it's saying subconsciously, I don't believe it's here. And remember, this is not about uh, intellectualism. This is about you understanding what God says in his word and how it applies to your life personally. His kingdom is already here. So, All throughout the Bible says a number of times, God is a great king. He's not somebody's president. He's a great what? King. What do we know about kings? And I know for all of us grew up in this Western educated, I got an opinion, I get a vote. It's hard for us to understand what a kingdom is. So we approach a king like he's a president and we're in a democracy. And they got people don't respect the president. Christians. So they'll treat God like they do the president. Because you don't understand a king, a king has to be followed. Has to follow that king's instructions. How many Christians sitting here right now, you don't follow the Lord. You're doing what you feel like doing. You treat people the way they treat you. You're born again, but you're not dominating. And the title today is Dominion. The series is Firm Foundation. But if you're going to dominate your circumstances, you got to submit to the one who's over every principality, the one who's over every demonic force, The one that's over every enemy, lust, every enemy, fornication, every enemy, poverty. He's already defeated every one of them on the cross for you. And the only way you're going to dominate, you have to be submitted to that king and allow him to dictate your life. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified. Somebody say I. I. That means your old way of thinking, the old way you were born, you got to now get rid of it. And allow Jesus' thoughts to be your thoughts. So if somebody treats you bad, you're not responding to how they treat you. Why? Because you got the thought of Christ. I'm going to love you even though you're acting unlovable. Got it? Otherwise, you'll never have consistency in your life. If you walk out in that, in that lobby, you're going to see on the wall, and it's kind of intentionally put almost as a shadow, be a thermostat and not a thermometer. How many Christians are uh, thermometers? Right now, you up and down. Matter of fact, you kind of like, I don't know if it was uh, cereal or what. I think crack. We don't know who you're going to be today. (laughs) Anybody know anybody like that? (laughs) Sitting right at church every week. Who, matter of fact, we probably should be asking each other, who am I talking to today? Look at your neighbor and say, that shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. be. 
First Thessalonians 5.23. And the very God of what? Peace. He's a God of what? Peace. The God of what? Peace. How many want peace? Amen. And how many of y'all know this world doesn't have peace? Am I right? But he's the God of what? Peace. Sanctify you holy. That's not H-O-L-Y. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y. Whole. He doesn't want you to just get healing. He wants you to be whole. Can you imagine how many couples get married that are not whole? You know how many people step in a pulpit who are not whole? And anytime you enter into an environment where you're not whole, you're going to require that environment to do what only Jesus can do. And it can't do it. If I don't get whole as a pastor, you can pat me on the back and tell me how great my messages are. I'm going to have a whole lot of dysfunction in my life if I'm living my life to try to get you to cheer and confirm to me how good a preaching I'm doing. Versus listening to what God is saying to me and giving you exactly what he tells you and exactly what he's telling me to say to you because it's for me and it's for you. Your heavenly father loves you so much he don't play games. He will allow you and I to come together and he's like a father. He's going to father you. Now, what's the dangerous part of that is many of us have never been fathered because we've had imperfect fathers. But your heavenly father wants to step in and totally eradicate what your natural father didn't do for you. Your heavenly father will become the perfect father to you if you let him. If you get rid of all your false pretense, if you recognize all the things you're trying to do for fame, for personal gratification, because you wasn't affirmed, nobody encouraged you, they didn't pick you on the team, you were the last one, you were the water boy, you were on the bench. Your heavenly father now wants to get you and tell you, get in the game. And while you're in the game, he's going to show you how to play the game. You know what a lot of people want to do? They want to sit and hear another teaching. They want to sit and read the Bible again. When God said, no, you done read the Bible, you done heard the messages, now it's time to get your behind on the field and play the game. Amen. Sitting around here with all this Bible stuff, it only works if you do it. You got to practice it. You got to do what? Practice. You got to practice. AI, Errol and Iverson, we talking about practice. You got to practice it. You got to do it. When somebody is at a store and you walk in there and they don't come to you and help you, you got to practice not saying, well, they must be racist. Yeah, they might, man, man, if I know them people see me. <laughs> Somebody said, that's me all day. <laughs> I know, that's why your father is telling you <laughs> and teaching you about this. The only way you're going to have a stable marriage, you got to have a different anchor. Otherwise, if your husband doing good, you're going to be good. But your husband may not be, be doing good today. You mean you're going to have a bad day? Jesus is a king of kings, and his father, our heavenly father, is the king. And kings don't care about your opinion. Hello. Hello. I know you all smart and all that. Now, you've only been here maybe 60, 70 years. This is the ancient of days. And some of us so prideful think we know some, we, we think we need to be counseling God. <laughs> now, you don't say this, but you behave this way. You come to God with one way. He don't care if you were LeBron James. You come to him on your knees. You come to him as a king who gave you the gift to be LeBron. You come to him, even you don't know him, you know there's a creator. Right. 
And you come at him like that. You don't come at him, well, you know they did everything wrong. He sees you. He don't even talk to you about somebody else. I, don't, I, I do my best not to ever talk to my children about my children. Stop doing it, parents. That's immature parenting. Did I hit anybody's seat here? Just <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, Pastor. Break that down. Break that down. Break that down as it relates to what? Yeah. Talking to your other kids. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes parents are spill on the child that they're closest to. Don't do that. Because you'll put a strain in the relationship of the children. Right? They all got different relationship with you. But they all should have love for you and from you. Am I got it? Did I get that right? So the very God of peace sanctify you how? All right. Everybody say holy. Holy. The series is firm foundation. That means what I'm getting ready to tell you, you're going to be able to stand on it. And you're going to be able to stand on it with all hell breaking loose on the earth. We, in that song, Firm Foundation, it says the wind blew. When it talks about the wind, that means the wind of contrary conditions is going to come hit your house. But what he said was, if you built your house on something that can't be blown away, you're going to stay, stand, you're going to stay solid even though other people's houses, lives have blown away. Y'all got it? If you will build where? On the foundation. You got it? And I pray God, there it is again, your what? Whole. Now, what's the whole part of you? Here it is. I pray God your whole what? Spirit. And? Soul. And? Body. Be what? Preserve. How? Blame. Until? Blame. So what's the whole you? Let's stop, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. How many people sitting here don't know this? You are a spirit. That's why you can have a conversation inside yourself and never open your mouth. Because you're a spirit. So when he says, and I'll show you in a second, in a Genesis, Genesis just tell it, it's gen sis. Gene sis, G-E-N-E, that means beginning. Go back to what God said you were before the fall. Because now in Christ, that's who you be. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is going to take you back to the beginning, gene, beginning, so you can know what you were like before the fall. Because now that you're in Christ, you're back what you were like before the fall. Hello. I'll say it again. Jesus will constantly tell you about the beginning, before the fall, so you can know what you're supposed to be. And then in Christ, he's going to remind you that's who you are now. You are what Adam was before he fell. You now have the power and the mind of Christ where you can step on serpents and scorpions, which is demonic activity. Demonic activity is not a ghost. Demonic activity is the spirit of division that's trying to divide families. Where husband and wife don't get along. That's called divorce. Where, uh, what I call this, uh, economics. What you making and people think they better because of the economic status. That's called debalos. That's called the devil. Anytime you hear the word devil, it is one that casts oneself in between two to divide them. And when he can divide you, one can slay a thousand. But two can slay how many? So if I don't want you to multiply, I'm going to get you divided from your other one. Why? Because one can what? But two can what? Now, what are we talking about slaying thousands or 10,000? We're talking about demonic activity that's going to try to show up in your family from prior generations. Some of us have diabetes from prior generations. And God has created you in Christ to stop it. You are now able to, if you allow the Spirit of God to work in you, you will stop diabetes from passing on to your children and to your children's children. Now, if you broke and poverty is in your life, God has gotten you saved not to take you to heaven. 
But for his spirit to get inside of you, you pray in the Holy Spirit, and he teach you methodically, practically how to take care of your money so you can have an inheritance for your children's children. You're not sitting in here to get saved, to go to heaven. Heaven is already in you. Eternal life is already in you. God has allowed you to get saved, Brittany, so you can dominate in your sphere of influence, and you don't need anything outside of you to validate you. I am a child of the Most High God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Y'all know what that means? Because of Christ, he put me in right standing. I can be in right standing but not be walking right. Come on. So a lot of people are out of Egypt, but they haven't gotten to Canaan yet. And Canaan is where God gives you more than enough. The wilderness is where you just got enough. He now, I have a promised land for you. And it's spiritually now. Now in the New Testament, he wants you and I walking in the promised land. Y'all know what the promised land is? He said, I'm going to give you houses you didn't build. He said, I'm going to give you pomegranates. By the way, pomegranate represents, if you know anything about a pomegranate, look inside of it, you're going to see a whole lot of seeds. Because a pomegranate represents fruitfulness. I already know, man, man, this stuff coming out of me like water. If you spend time with God, he'll help you see the metaphors, pictures, allegories, and he'll tell you what they mean spiritually in the New Testament. So in the Old Testament, we had a guy named Joseph found in Genesis 37. This kid named Joseph got a dream when he was 17 years old. So parents, we got to rise today. Get your middle schoolers and high schoolers here. And parents, be parents. Middle schoolers and high schoolers don't tell you what they're going to do. Can I, can, I get a, can, can I get a parent in here to say amen? amen. I know the middle school and high school, they're not going to clap for this. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? But parents, you're you going to be like, um, what's my man's name? You're going to make them make them clap to this. <laughs> That's Eric being Rakim, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, when I talked about parents being parents, the kids didn't clap. But the parents are supposed to make them clap to this. Because you the parent. The parents that almost like give up their role. You the parent. What you mean this your room? I just, I just sense a spirit of a child saying, this, this is my room. <laughs> That's a good way to give a parent a stink face. Your room? What? <laughs> Some of y'all going to be like, I think it's Job around 40 when God starts asking Job, where were you? Because, <laughs> you know, Job was thought he was all that in a bag of chips, right? So God be like, where were you when I made the world? He said, where were you when I made the unicorn? Where were you when I told the water you're not going to go any further? And y'all know what Job did? Because Job's problem was self-righteousness. He was blameless, but he wasn't sinless. Because if you're not in Christ, you're still a sinner. You may be walking right and to your best ability be blameless, meaning nobody can say you did something wrong. But don't mean you're not a sinner. Because a sin is a condition. It's not a sickness. And when they psychologically and therapize and therapists try to get your sin to become a sickness, you won't look for a savior. You'll look for medicine. I'm telling you, the Spirit has given me this as I talk to you. We got the Western culture dependent on medicine. What would happen if I asked all of y'all to bring me your medicine put on a pl- on the platform? God didn't create you to live off medicine? He said, my word is medicine. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you're to get in this Western culture, and you'll think medicine's supposed to be, that's what cope with you. Some of us, you, 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 you smoking that weed because you're out of control. I'm telling you, you don't have to live like that. 
Look at somebody right now. Tell them, you ain't got to live like that. I heard one of y'all, one of y'all say, are you sure? <laughs> now, <laughs> this is only for people who want this. Everything that God has is choice-driven. Choice. He says it over and over again. Uh, Joshua said, choose you today who you're going to serve. He said, y'all vacillating back and forward? He said, I'm telling you, Joshua was the leader. He's the one that, that uh, followed Moses. He was the one had to be a different leader than what Moses was. Moses brought him out, out of slavery. Now Joshua got to teach him how to live free. And every one of us been set free. But why are we in bondage to these other things where you got to smoke something or you got to drink something or you just got to have that man or you can't sleep or you got to have Ambien? When he says he give his beloved sleep, I'm calling it out because it's supposed to get out. I'm just saying to you, if you don't want to, you don't have to live like that. If you don't want to. My mother refused to allow a Cornet Word Catholic school at third grade the nun, who they weren't at the time, is not knocking Catholic churches. This was my real story. I was in third grade. Y'all heard it before, many. And I'll say it again. Because I know what God did for me. And I know before I ever got saved how he protected me through these parents. Because yeah. Cornet Word, I got two older brothers. All of us are at Cornet Word Catholic School. At that time, those schools were not prepared to manage kids who uh, learn differently, and had different, like, I'm, I'm an outdoor dude. Like, get me outside. Man, I'm sitting at a desk, I'm ready to fight everybody. I'll break the pencil and the calculator. <laughs> My brother Achilles, I sit at a desk, he's CPA today. This dude, like, he get him a county, you can get him a balance sheet, a calculator, he'll be at that desk for 12 hours. That ain't me. Put me outside, let me hit somebody for free. <laughs> so what better sport than football? And stop judging what you think God's going to ha not have Christians doing. Yeah. Well, you know, I know, I know God ain't going to have no Christian playing football. Shut up. Right. God's going to call you in and going to say, where were you? Right. I create people and I create them for different occupations right. so they can be in a blessing in these occupations and they can see me working through them in these occupations. Yeah. No matter what you are. That's why you don't just go to college. You got to find out who you are. What's your giftings? Before you got here, God put some packages in you, some packaging, some gifts in you. Do you know who you are? If the tragedy is not death. I wish it was. It's not. It's having never lived. I can make millions of dollars right now as a broadcaster. Millions. That's not what I'm called to do. That's not what I'm called to do. I got a degree in accounting and I don't like numbers. I just follow my brother. But if you will humble yourself and say to God, I know I have a purpose. Social media gets you fixated on other people. That's why you can't drop the device. You use social media for your profit, not your disadvantage. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Have you met you yet? That's my question. Have you met you? <laughs> Two phony people get married. They're going to have problems. None of them know who they are. Yeah. So they each are going to try to help each other be whatever they don't even know who they are. <laughs> even the, your husband, even your wife, God has a husband and a, a wife, a husband or a wife for you. And I know you may, it's hard for you to believe. He makes all these animals. He tells the, God tells, tells the water don't go any further. Did y'all hear that? 
tells the water to do what? Go to the beach. What stops the water? Somebody says shoreline. Really? There's no, there's no uh, levee. So how could the shoreline stop it? I'm telling you in the book, he says, I tell it where to go. And I blow the wind when I want a, f- a city to flood. I know you got this teaching where they say God won't do anything bad to people. You better go read your Bible. Amen. Don't let these shiny preachers stand up here telling you, otherwise you wouldn't fear God. He told Abraham, should I hide from Abraham what I'm getting ready to do? Sodom and Gomorrah was wilding out. It was a city. It wasn't just homosexuality. It was a whole lot of wickedness. And God knows he created the earth for righteous living. And I don't know if you notice, inside the earth is the DNA to, for righteous living to be lived on it. And when it is not, it will automatically vomit up earthquakes, storms. You'll start seeing all kind of craziness because the earth was not created for unrighteous living. And anytime there's a protruded, protracted, long period of time of wickedness in an area, God has to judge the area. And that's what he was doing in Genesis with Abraham. But what he was trying to do is save some people because he doesn't wish to any. God is now not trying to kill people. God didn't take your child. Some well-meaning preacher gets there and quote the wrong thing out of Job. God given and God take it away. God did not kill your child. Satan killed Job's children. Now God allowed it, but Satan did it. Are we tracking good? Why are we envious, jealous of people? There's no one more beautiful than you. Because there's no other you. They may have a doppelganger, which means somebody means somebody looks like you, but they ain't you. So God loved what he made. Why don't you? I'm going to tell you why you don't. Because of this fashion and how they try to tell us what's beautiful. How they try to tell us what's good hair. How are you going to tell me what's good hair? And then I believe you. I know I got good hair. <laughs> Even though I got a little of it. <laughs> but I know it's good. Because God doesn't make junk. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't I'm, 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 I'm really just, I'm, I'm walking out on the water now. I'm walking on a plank for some of y'all. I just want to challenge some of you all. There's nothing wrong with this. I'm not saying anything wrong with it. Every now and then, take off all the stuff you've added to yourself and just allow your natural self to be seen in the mirror. There's nothing wrong with all the whatever you do, but increase, whatever it is. No, seriously. You, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. My concern is to make sure you love yourself. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? I'm, and please, don't say pastor was talking about, I'm not talking about nothing. You can do whatever you want. What I'm saying to you is, don't allow it to be driven because of your lack of self-love for you. And because Nicki Minaj and Sexy Red and all them, and it's it's popular. Don't let that conform you. Don't don't let them do that. Come on. Come on, everybody. Come on. We all, guess what? I'm I'm just really, I I know the Holy Spirit is helping you all understand what I'm saying. Here's what God says. He says, we have all been like sheep led astray. He didn't say we were sheep. He says we have likeness like a sheep. And a sheep typically will blindly follow the lead. So that means we have a condition. If we're not careful, we will be led blindly, even though your eyes have been opened. 
In the kingdom, your eyes have been opened. So if somebody's now following Christ, you don't follow them. Because your eyes have been what? Opened. When you are blind, Jesus said, how can the blind lead the blind? Won't they both fall into the ditch? Somebody may say, well, a blind person can't lead a blind person. Yes, they can. They, it, they, wherever they're going, it just won't be good. <laughs> what am I doing? I am now taking you back to Genesis. You're in the kingdom now. You have a king who's a spirit, and you are a spirit. That means the real you is not the person you see in the mirror. It's the clothes that you see in the mirror. You are not your thoughts. You, the real you, is a spirit. Here we go. I pray that God, your whole what? Spirit. And what? Soul. Soul. Mind. Will. Emotions. What get people in trouble? The soul. Where is most of our challenges? The soul. A wounded soul. <laughs> And I pray, this is, this is Paul, I pray, and that's what I'm praying over you right now. I pray over me right now. Heavenly Father, that you will cause my whole spirit, our whole spirit and soul and body to be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You pray this stuff over your life. You do what? You pray this over your life. That's how you get God's word activated. Pray the word. You see something, God says, I want you whole. And God says, I want you to have peace. God says, and the very God of peace sanctify you. Anybody know what sanctify means? Set apart. You ain't who you used to be. In Christ, you ain't the same old person. You're not slick willy anymore. You're not a mean, angry person anymore. That person has been crucified Amen. through the cross. That old you that's trying to come, like being like your daddy, and your daddy wasn't saved. You're no longer like your daddy. You're born again. Now, don't go around saying how bad your daddy is, because that'll bring a curse on you. Your dad got whatever he got. Pray that God give you whatever you're supposed to get. Y'all got it? Your job is not to build your, your life off a, bu a, a bunch of knots, not goals. I'm not going to be this. I'm not going to be that. I'm not going to have a bad marriage. That's not faith. You build your life on, I'm going to honor God. I'm going to have a great marriage. You don't do it off of how bad your parents' marriage was. That's nobody's business. You cover your parents. Unless they're doing something illegal, then you, you do with the right people you make sure you expose that. But in terms of just going around talking bad about your parents, I wouldn't suggest that. That's called uncovering your parents or your father's nakedness. It, it will bring a curse on you. And a curse, don't think of somebody coming and it's a magic potion. A curse simply means negative consequences for doing that. And it's not God giving you negative consequences. It's already in the laws of the earth. Cover your parents unless your parents, one of them, are doing something illegal. Then you make sure you get them to the help and you let people know. I'm not talking about that. But if they were dysfunctional for whatever reason when you were growing up, that ain't your job to be telling everybody. Your job is to let God work through you. And whatever deficits they had, let, allow God to work through you where you don't have that deficit. Can somebody say Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We'll close with this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. This is the beginning. Somebody say beginning. beginning. And God said, let us make man in our what? Image. Anytime you see that image, always think of man as a spirit because God is a spirit. Everybody got it? So the real me is a what? Spirit. spirit. Got it? Real you is a what? Spirit. When you look in the mirror, can you see your spirit? No, but your spirit is looking through your eyes. Y'all got it? 
and after our likeness. That means God wants us to act like him. Anybody, you, you ever have friends or relatives say, you're just like your mama? Anybody ever say that? And how many of y'all know it wasn't always a compliment? <laughs> and stop saying, I'm not going to be like my mama. Stop saying that. You're going to end up being just like your mama. Because the goal is not to not be like your mama. The goal is to be like Christ. <laughs> so the first thing God establishes, let me make man like me in my same stuff. So they're spirit. Now let me put in them how they can act like me. I don't lie, so they shouldn't be lying. I don't do things in secret, so you shouldn't be doing things in secret. Y'all got it? He wants you acting like him. I love people who are not lovable. So I put my spirit in you to do the same. Got it? Now, once you got your image, you know who you are, and now you know who you're supposed to be acting like, what's the next thing he tell you to do? Have to do what? Dominion. Title today is dominion. Only way you're going to dominate if you know who you are, man, in God's image. That's why God said don't kill humans. Because humans, their spirit man is made in God's image. That's why he will always set in the system the vengeance. Revenge will happen to those who kill people innocently. And because there's not forgiveness proclaimed in a lot of our hoods and places where murders are happening, all it is is retaliation. Because nobody is, is, has gotten or uh, being preached to or taught to forgive so they can get that killing out the family, out the environment. So he said, let them have what? Let them have what? Dominion. So now that you're a spirit, and now you know how you act, now it's time to dominate. And I need you speaking to everything. First thing I need you to know, God will keep you in perfect peace. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. What you been thinking about? Your spirit already delivered. You, you free now. Now, the greatest problem you're going to have is what? If you're going to dominate this, you got to have a mindset to dominate because you know who you are. Jesus walked on water. Can anybody tell me the, the people that walked on water in the Bible? Who else? Peter. Now, if you're in the first service, be quiet. <laughs> Has anybody else in here walked on water? I've been walking on water. 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 Every time you do what God says, you're walking on water. Because in Ephesians 5, he tells husband, and you husbands, wash your wives with the water of the word. He uses water as symbolism for his word. And when you do what he tells you, like I did, he told me walk on Southern University's football team a week before the season started my junior year in college. And when you walk on water by doing what he tell you, it doesn't matter whether the storm comes and all your teammates hate you. Because they have been practicing five weeks or two a days. It doesn't matter. So the storm of them hating on you is going to come. But I ain't looking at the storm or them hating on me, and I ain't talking about my haters. Because I'm walking on water. You're just doing what he tell you. So when the storms come, because they're going to come, right? They're going to come. My, and, and, and all I know is I end up starting by the fifth game because I'm walking on. And by the way, walking on water is symbolic of a miracle. Your whole faith is based on a miracle. So you and I should be experiencing miracles. 
I ain't really supposed to be having a woman like Pastor T. Now, I don't need you saying amen. <laughs> In other words, I wasn't that kind of dude. Pastor T was a virgin. That was one of the things that attracted me. At, uh, we were always talking about she and her sister. They were twins, Stacy and Tracy. <laughs> I'm telling y'all because some of them already know. Our dialect, because I'm from New Orleans. Virginity and all of that never crossed our mind. I'm going to tell you, like in a vulgar way, we had this old saying, uh, we wanted to know you were having sex. And if we didn't find out you were having sex, we gave you the Dusty Pool Stick Award. Mm. <laughs> I'm saying all that to say, that was my ignorance. Right. Didn't know. But God has created humans, man and woman. Here's another question for you. Can you do anything to impress God? What can you and I do to impress him? Hmm? Mm -hmm. It was a rhetorical question. There's nothing you and I can do. He's the ancient of days. What hasn't he seen? But Jesus showed us there is something that gets his attention. And that's when he sees something unusual. The Seraphonician woman who came to him saying somebody about our daughter's sick or something, and Jesus said to her, it's not right to take the children's bread and give to the dogs, because she was a Gentile. Gentiles to Jews were considered dogs. It wasn't a negative term. It was, that's how Jews saw a metaphor as it relates to a Gentile. And to them, Gentiles would eat anything. He tells them it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to a dog. And the homegirl, she ain't get offended. Some of us would have got offended. What? Who are you calling a dog? Now, she need to get her child healed. Now, what's your, you going to get offended or are you going to get business done? Some of y'all got to know how to do business and get away from these personalities. Y'all ruin business deal because of the personalities. She ain't get offended. Y'all know what that lady said? Yeah, but even the dogs eat from the master's table. She said, what? It got his attention. He said, I've not found faith like this, not even in Israel. So something unusual gets God's attention. When we heard about the tight butt twins, that's what we called them. In our circles with my boys from New Orleans, we would all talk about the tight butt twins. And then we engrafted a guy in from Wisconsin named Marcus. He's looking at this, this teaching right now. Marcus had a brand new Mazda, a white, like a brand new car came from Wisconsin and we engrafted him into the New, I'm sorry, Wichita, Wichita, Kansas. We New Orleans guys engrafted him in, but we didn't really like him because he had this brand new Mazda and he was going to the freshman dorm, taking the two twins and all their little friends to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> so we really were kind of mad at him because he messing the game up, right? Just like God, I saw something unusual. I saw something unusual. That's why God, ladies, gents, that's why he wants us to develop and grow in holiness. So somebody else can see something unusual. It's unusual when you're single and you got yourself together. You're not under the control of flesh. You're not under control of lust. You got your money tight. Got it? You, you, you're paying off debts. You're saving. How many of y'all know that's unusual? Come on. Somebody say, I received that. I don't want y'all, I don't want y'all clapping like, that would be nice. <laughs> I want you saying, I can live like this. You can live like this. I don't care where you started. You start today with a mindset. Y'all got it? With a what? A mindset. The first thing you got to change is your mindset because your spirit already saved. So now you got to take the word and renew this mind because this mind want to think like how you grew up. This mind want to think about what you saw growing up. And you, if, you're not, if you're not careful or you do an examination of yourself, 
you'll find that you're doing a lot of stuff you saw when you were growing up. You're eating a lot of the bad stuff that you, your parents and everybody else is eating. Because you're born again, you can shift now yes. if you change your mindset. So when, when I saw Pastor T, something went off in me. I can't explain it. The truth is, if you just look at my resume, I didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve her. Somebody say, but God. <laughs> now here's the beautiful part. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Put it up there. Therefore, if any man, male or female, be in Christ, he put a, paint, a, 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 paint, a, a, a coat of paint over him. He is a what? I can't hear you. A new what? A new what? Totally new creation. Totally. He's talking about the spirit man. And once you get that revelation that you're a totally new creation in your spirit man, now you'll start recreating in your mind and recreating in your body. It will conform to exactly the new creature that you are now. He is a new creature. He or she is a what? New creature. How much? Old. What, what's passed away? Old. I can't hear you. How much? How many are not living the life you're supposed to be living because of old stuff? Y'all know why they make the rearview mirrors smaller than the windshield? That windshield is so much bigger. That's where you're going. Amen. Stop staring in the rearview mirrors. You can't do anything about dry cement. But if you will accept today, I'm a new creation. And you will receive what he's telling you. Old things have passed away. Your old bad financial decisions have passed away. Sickness and disease for you has passed away. We be talking about, oh, he, somebody died. We say they passed. You need to be telling yourself that. That old bad eating habit has passed away. And some of y'all need to help each other at the kitchen table. Do you need another piece? <laughs> no, because that has. <laughs> See somebody getting ready to be angry and the old person come up? You need to be a friend and say it. That, that part of you? Got it? That part of you is what? And tell yourself that. Somebody pulling over, getting in front of you? You already know. As soon as you look over, you know what they're going to do. <laughs> you already know. You need to tell yourself that old person who would go right behind him and blow the horn has what? That old person that could not reconcile because you're constantly thinking about what you're going to say while the other person talking has what? We need some shirts. We need some merch. We need shirts. My old me has passed away. The old me has passed away, and you got to remind yourself. That's what Paul meant, Lou. Lou, Lou. Galatians 2.20. I, 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 that's the real you, has passed away been crucified with Christ. The old me sneaking around, lying, hooking and crooking has passed away. Now, get this. Get this. If you'll really run with him, any of that junk you did in the past, he'll put the blood on it. 
and he'll tell the hound dogs of hell that's trying to come after you based on what you did in the past, he tell them, I wish you would. That's why I would get saved if I wasn't saved. You mean I can get that from the cross? Yes. 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 Oh, you got to remind yourself. That's, that's the past. Dude call you, used to call you, and used to, he used to try to finagle with you, and you'd be on the phone, and you let him talk you into it. You gotta, if you decide to answer, I would tell you how to ignore it. But if you decide to answer, you need to be able to tell him one thing and one thing only. The old me has passed away. You need to tell them which funeral home to go to <laughs> if they want to talk to that person again. Come on. Let's leave with this. You've been crucified, and you got to remind yourself. All you got to do is remind yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Talk to yourself kindly. Girl, you know, you don't need to eat that. We don't need that today. Let's pass the way. And stop saying it's going to be a struggle. He said, the way of the transgressor, the one that breaks God's laws, is hard. Jesus said, my yoke easy, my burden is light. When you go up, a, uh, you get in shape, you go up a flight of steps, and you ain't breathing, is that hard? That sounds like that feel good. No, what's hard is, is when you don't get in shape, and you go up them stairs. <laughs> That's hard. Sickness and disease. That's hard. Having to go get treatment. That's hard. Stop telling yourself what's hard. This ain't hard. Stepping away from this so I don't have to later on maybe go get some treatment. That, that, that's the easy one. Old things passed away. 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 Old things have passed away. You're a new cre- creature. Whatever your sin was, has all been paid in the cro- with the cross. Amen. Jesus died for this. Amen. Father, thank you. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? None of the rest, none of these other gods did anything like that. Go read about them. Every one of them. Not another can say that their Christ, their Savior, not only died and rose again, but told him he was going to do it. Told him. And all throughout the book, it's all written. And he put us back in the original state, and it's, supposed, it's time for us to start living like that. You will never be broke another day in your life. And all this strife in families, I'm cursing it at the root. You will be part of the solution of peace in your family. You guys will get together like you've never gotten together before. And you will be the catalyst. Father, thank you.